Hola guys and girls and welcome back to another Keyforge top 5 comment video and this time we are gonna talk about the top 5 comments of the house mass. Uh, first of all, if you're first to this video, of course, I did cover a lot of the houses already in the past. I don't know in which order I will upload them, so I can't really tell you which video before that. But uh, yeah, if not all of them are there yet, you can look forward to uh, me covering the other houses soon. But first of all, why I'm gonna cover the only the comments, not the overall top 5. First of all, I thought you find all kinds of top 5 and top 10 lists already on YouTube. If you want just an overall list of all the cards, top 5, top 10 beat by house or in general stuff like that, you can find them all there. I want to focus on the comments and I want to... There's a very easy reason why I want to focus on the comments. That is because they are common. Pretty simple like that. These are the cards you're going to find the most in your deck. Most of your deck is going to be consistent of these common cards, the uncommons and rares and special cards follow after that. So yeah, these are the cards you're going to play the most, you're going to play them against the most. So I thought covering these is the most interesting for me and for you guys as well. And since yeah, these will make out the brunt of your deck, they will make the, out the brunt of your experience with Keyforge. So yeah, I want to show you basically what in my opinion are the cards you have to look out for there, either by seeing an opponent's card list or on your own to see if it's a good deck or not and stuff like that. Obviously, like I mentioned, these are by my own opinion. I'm not looking at any metric or something like that, like win rate or something like that. These uh, lists are uh, yeah, done only by my experience play with these cards and against these cards. I play the game from launch. I'm rather uh, active in the uh, competitive community here in Germany. So yeah, I like to think that I have a good amount of experience. But of course, this is a discussion video. This is me representing my opinion. And then uh, if we can talk about it in the comments, I wish you love that. So yeah, if you in the end disagree with some of my placements or uh, think I forgot a card which deserved a spot there, feel free to uh, express your reasons and stuff like that in the comments down below. But for now, let's just hop right into the top 5 cards for Mars. And before we go into the, the actual top 5, um, yeah, I, I said that twice already, I'm sorry. Like, if you want to see the cards, you can skip ahead. But uh, yeah, of course the problem with Mars is it was it's not part of Worlds Collide anymore. So yeah, there's a, a little less cards to choose from. And actually, while creating this list, I looked at through the cards and I thought, oh, damn, Mars common cards are all not that great. Like in comparison to other houses, especially like Logos, this uh, stuff like that, which i had done before, the common cards in Mars kind of pale in comparison. And yeah, yeah, it kind of looks like the best mask cards you find are either rare or uncommon. So yeah, these are still some good cards in the comments. Don't uh, uh, yeah, don't think that they're all bad. But in comparison to other houses, yeah, Mars doesn't have that many good common cards. It basically explains why Mars always has the trouble that you really need. Like it has like kind of the problem. Sorry, it has similarly similarly that you need like the right composition of mask cards to have great mass. Like in other houses, it's very easy to have like a good logos or this or star lines, something like that. But with Mars, you need like the proper combination of cards to actually make it strong. And I think by creating this, this actually might be the reason because the common cards are they are decent. Like they're a good amount of decent cards, but they're not great. So yeah, let's hop right in with the number five spot, which is the action card introduced in Call of the Archons Squawker. Like I mentioned, action card gives you an ember and plus the effect played ready a mask creature or stun a non mask creature. So already you get some versatility with this, with this. If you already have a mask board, you just play the creature you want to use right away. You can play it to ready it to use it twice or just to use it right away. Or if you don't have anything you want to use twice or, or, or again, you can just stun a non-mask creature of the opponent. So I like the versatility aspect of that. Most of the times you're going to use the first one, you're just going to ready a mask creature because Mars has some great reap and, and uh, reap effects on their creatures. Especially if you have a big uh, mask board, you can like go really insane with that. But uh, yeah, that's one of the weaknesses of Mars. They need usually a, a representation on the board. Like You need a lot of mask creatures on the field already and ready to use to actually make perfect use out of the house. So yeah, that's where Squawker a little bit helps because you play the card and then you can ready it and use it right away. So that's like kind of why I think this card is great. And you ha if you have already bought, like I mentioned, you can just use a creature twice, which can be pretty insane with some of the cards you will see later on in this list. 
But yeah, that's Quarka. Like I said, pretty straightforward effect. Uh, the stunning will be happening uh, very little, I feel like. Most of the times you're just gonna ready a mass creature of your own to use it right away. But yeah, that is Quarka. Now hopping to the number four spot. I have a creature for you, the Collector Worm. Introduced in Age of the Ascension, the second set. A two power creature with five armor and the fight effect. Archive the creature, Collector Worm with fights. If that creature leaves your archives, put it in its owner's hand instead. So yeah. This is one of the things Mars can do, which other houses can't, is archiving the opponent's creatures into your own archive. So basically, getting uh, it's similar to exiling, but you ha you don't get to play with an archive. Like if you have your own in your own deck, you want to archive a lot from your own cards and keep them back for later. Cards like this kind of like they are still decent. Like they get rid of creature at least for a little bit of time. But you will give them back to them at some point if you want to own cards. But if you don't have a deck which archives a lot, these can. It's basically the same as exiling. You get or even better than exiling because some cards can actually get exiled cards back uh, with what's called light stuff. So you just remove them from the game completely, which is great. And this card, this uh, the fight effect, of course, only resolves if the creature survives the fight. So Collector Worm has to survive while doing that. But with five armor, this guy can archive a lot of creatures without taking any kind of damage. And he has a lot of survivability due to that five armor, since the armor always comes back at the start of the turn. So anything up to a power of six can just be uh, fought with this guy and get archived. Doesn't matter if they have elusive, you fight with it, it gets archived in the deck. So fight effects still resolve even if you fight an elusive creature. So yeah, that's why I think this card is great. And especially like if you can archive multiple things, like you get this guy ready more times to squawk or cards you will see later on. You can like get just very nice board control with a strong body, which the opponent has struggles to get rid of. So yeah, that's why I like Collector Worm, that's why I have the 4th spot. And yeah, now let's go on place number 3. And at number 1st spot, I have the big boy x uh, Dominator. 9 power, 1 armor, taunt, and he sadly enters the play stunned. This is something the mass has as well, like some big creatures enter the play stunned. But what makes the Dominator better than all of them is that he is like an immediate effect which is the taunt, which doesn't matter if you're stunned or not, you're still gonna protect your neighbors. And this is like, it's one of the strongest creatures in the, day, in, in the game, where only a few which actually have higher power plus armor. But uh, yes, in addition to have taunt, like if you have some annoying creatures, your opponent, uh, you don't want to get your opponent rid of beat in mass itself or even in other houses, they will have a hard time getting to them if the x uh, Dominator uh, is in the way of them. So yeah, that's why I like them a lot. Uh, obviously you need to wait two turns so you can actually use them to fight other stuff, but uh, mainly it's it's there just to protect your uh, creatures, be it like your Drumble or your Amber Imp in this, or be it like your mother or daughter. I mean, daughter can't happen since well, in the Maverick maybe it can, but or your mother in Logos, or be it your uh, other weak mass creatures, because so far, I mean, the two mass creatures we looked at, they are more strong in the power slash armor department, but uh, Mars still has a lot of weaker creatures, which have great effects, actually, which I'm going to cover later some of. But yeah, that's why I like the Dominator. Having multiple copies of this with like some weaker creatures in other houses, you want to like, like I said, keep protected. That's what Taunt does. This is a big boy. Uh, it's a big brother, which stands right next to you. And even if he's stunned, even if he's asleep or something like that, uh, the opponent still, he can't reach you unless he gets rid of this guy right next to you. So yeah, that's why I like the big boy Dominator. Uh, he's a bro. He, like, he might be stunned, but he's still looking out for you. That's why I put it at the number third spot. And uh, yeah, not too much to talk about here. Uh, obviously, if you can make him ready with other stuff like the squawk already shown or like soft landing, you can remove the stun immediately. And then he gets just, he's like, he if he wakes up, he's not your silent protector. He gets very uh, aggressive and actually starts getting rid of the opponent's creatures as well. So with, with how the Keyforge power system works, like even if you have eight damage on your Dominator already, you're still dealing nine damage when fighting, which is awesome. So that means even if you're very weakened, you can still get rid of a very big threat of your opponent. Uh, yeah, with just fighting with this 9 power you see right there on screen. But yeah, this is enough for this, the third spot. Now let's go to the number 1 spot. And the number 1 spot goes to another creature in Mars. And it is one of the mentioned weaker creatures introduced in Call of the Archons. I'm gonna show you John Smith. A 2 power creature, Asian Martian, with elusive and the effect fight slash reap ready a non-agent Mars creature. And this is one of the cards which allows Mars to just go insane, to just go bonkers and outvalue every other house out there. 
if you have the proper ball trail, that obviously. John Smith is great, sadly, uh, I mean sadly, thankfully, he uh, he only readies non-agent mass creatures, I think, actually, don't quote me on that, but I think John Smith is the only agent in mass, so it's just there, so John Smith doesn't, you don't have John two Smiths as well, they ready each other permanently and you get to reap a lot of times, a, a little less because of the rule of six, but still, it could be pretty insane, you have some art, uh, upgrades on them, which gives an additional reap effect. But yeah, this is a guy which just makes your mask ready and you get to other nice reap effects, be it like with the, uh, uh, what's called the Zookeeper, which archives other creatures by reaping, or the, uh, the x -Lix Bolter, which gets two damage on something and if they die they get uh, purged. You, like by readying these again and just reaping again and getting all these awesome effects going on, uh, that is what makes Mars so strong in the right matchup, because all the great abilities are reap effects, they're not action effects, you get your ember and you still get an awesome effect out of that, and to do that multiple times with John Smith is what puts this guy in the number 2 spot. Obviously, you need the proper board for this to be useful, but like I already mentioned, that goes is like a problem for all of Mars cards, so uh, if you have the proper board, I think this is the guy which will shine the most. And especially you have stuff like the Crystal Hive, which like is an artifact which you can use to double the amount of Ember you get when you reap. You just reap with this guy and get two Ember, ready something else, you get to reap with them twice. You have six Ember already with three creatures, only two creatures and one artifact. Obviously they need to be on the boards for that, but yeah, that's why I put John Smith on the uh, on the number two spot. He is the, the card which enables all these insane mass turns. Every mass player hopes to get with the proper deck structure and proper board setup. John Smith is close in all scenarios, the cornerstone of all these strategies. But uh, yeah, that's the number two spot for the, for you. Now, looking at the number one spot for you, he's not that bot dependent. He's still a creature. He's still introduced in Call of the Archons. It's the Grabber Jammer, uh, four power creature with one armor, a robot creature which has the effect your opponent key cost plus one and fight reap capture one. So he is one of the better. Uh, immediate uh, Ember Control cards in Mars. He's a I, this guy I like a lot. Actually, to have multiple copies of as well, like uh, John Smith too. But he needs like better reap effects, like Grabber Jammer for example as well, which has a good reap effect with capturing one. But just the static, your opponent keys costs one more, can be very impactful on a game. And with four power and one armor, it's actually not that easy to get rid of the Grabber Jammer, uh, barring uh, um, in comparison to some other creatures. So you need a, a, a total of 5 damage on this before it goes. So the ember you capture that actually might stay around for a few turns and the static effect of costing a key one more can be very great. Like I mentioned in other videos talking about uh, key costs, stuff like that. I think that's a very nice effect because it's, so far there's nothing that which prevents that. Like you have some stuff which prevents stealing, you can get captured ember can be dealt with e more easily as well. But the uh, key cost high... Um, Key cost increasing, that's what I was looking for, is better than capturing since capturing is just, you don't really get rid of the ember, barring with some few combos out there. You, but with key cost uh, increasing, you one can prevent keys and for one you can get rid of ember as well because if your opponent like, that's I think the best case scenario of key cost increasing is if you get rid of the opponent's ember through that, barring of course the last key, then you want to actually prevent the key. Uh, but like if the first key costs 9 ember and the actually, opponent actually has to spend all that 9 ember on that, that means he lost 3 ember through that and that's pretty strong uh, ember control in my opinion if you get rid of 3 ember from opponent's side. So yeah, that's why I have Grandpa Jamba at the number 1 spot. He doesn't really need a big board presence to be like very annoying to the opponent, he just play him and you already have the effect that costs one more and then if he stays on board you can start capturing, start making uh, the opponent nervous and uh, yeah annoyed by just having to spend way too much on their keys especially if you get multiple copies of the grabber jammer on the board and uh, yeah that's why i think he's deserving of the number one spot in mass like i said the massless comparison to other houses not that impressive but still there are some nice cards there and yeah there are some nutty nas mass turns we can just go on of course you have some other combos there as well but sadly not in the comments which is i think the problem with mass there's some great cards in mass but they're not common and I, uh, it's, it seems like that's kind of the problem with Mars, why it's like, it can be very strong, but it's difficult to get like a proper Mars or a good competitive Mars in a deck. 
So yeah, these are my top five comments for the House Mars. If you do agree, let me know. I mean, I mean, if you do agree, you don't really need to let me know. You can just put a like or something like that. But if you disagree, then I want to know from you. But let me know in the comments if you think I forgot a card or I swapped some places around, like some, something else deserves the number one, two, whatever spot. Let me all that know in the comments. Which is this is I, I want to see the smallest discussion video, not like representing you. These are the top five. These are and no discussion allowed. These are the actual top five. Uh, no, the, I want to represent you uh, an opinion. I want to represent you with a view on things and uh, yeah Then we can talk about it and you can form your own opinion for all of that But uh, yeah, that's all for this video If you did enjoy leave a like comment subscribe, you know the deal hit me on tw Twitter on Facebook all the links are in the description and uh, yeah I will see you another time. Ciao